What's up guys, before we get into the video, I wanted to show you guys the progress on the, the, the office. Looking good. We're gonna be talking about sound switch today in the back. Other than the flooring not in yet, it's looking pretty good. But today we're gonna be talking about sound switch with my boy Marcellus. So like you saw from the intro, we're gonna be revisiting sound switch today, going through the new sound switch updated profile that we have, talking and answering some of the questions you guys had around sound switch and showcasing some of the lighting that we have here at Bolf Lighting USA and how it integrates directly with sound switch and just in general answering and going through all the details when it comes to sound switch on the computer, how it works, how it integrates with your thing and the tools and tricks to basically do DMXing for your lighting, whether you wanna do it yourself or if you wanna cheat code it and get our pre-programmed file. So let's get into going through this stuff. So for you guys that do not know, just a little background. I personally use SoundSwitch for all of my events, been using it for over a couple years now. And I don't like programming DMX, even though you guys see I have a full programming tutorial on how to do Show Express, it took forever. And one of the biggest things I didn't like was having to have a separate laptop, all that. So my boy over here has been on SoundSwitch since the beginning and has been begging me to join SoundSwitch for the longest time. And finally, a couple years ago, I said, all right, cool, I'm gonna do it. And he pre-programmed it all for me. And literally all I had to do was download SoundSwitch onto my computer, upload his pre-programmed file that was already set for the lighting that I use and our whole team here at Fusion uses. And I was up and running. It reads the music I'm playing, it bounces it to the BPM and keeps the show very creative and different. And that was my biggest hurdle was the fact that my lighting show was purely based on how good my operator was. And now that I'm using SoundSwitch, I got rid of the whole need to have a lighting operator at my events. It's just sitting on this little Control One dashboard we'll show here in a second and allows me to basically pre do or not even pre, but during the show quickly adjust the scenes that I need, hit the strobe if I need it, and my, my lighting looks amazing. It's so easy to do. In fact, to the point where I literally made it a standard here at our company, Fusion Sound Lighting, that we all use this exact same setup for our lighting. It just makes it so much better. So we're gonna go through all the fixtures real quick that we have set up here. And we're also gonna answer some common questions around what fixtures you can and cannot use with the pre-programmed file because this program that I'm talking about that I use, our whole team uses, you can purchase it. We have it for sale. Let's go through the fixtures though. We got Marcel's computer here today, but that doesn't really matter. It can be anybody's computer. We're running sound switch, of course. So we do have our sound switch license on here. We have our sound switch control one. It's our favorite interface to use. You don't have to use an interface. You can use the sound switch micro, which, uh, this is a, a broken one version of it, but basically it just plugs in the USB and then gives you the output that then goes to your transmitter. You can use the computer for the same functionality. It's just here you got physical touch controls, which I personally like while I'm DJing to be able to hit the white button, you know, bounce the white, hit the strobe button, change up the scenes, nice, quick and easy. We're using a transmitter pro today. You guys might be familiar with the wireless DMX donor system. This is basically just the beep the up version of it. And uh, all of our guys are using these now just because it helps significantly with bigger rooms, no dropouts, that sort of thing. But that right there is a transmitter pro that is transmitting. It also is a receiver, which we have one right up here that then hooks into all of these movers. So that way we don't have to, you know, use as many DMX receivers, even though it is a nice small setup, but it just makes things easier. And they're also not battery powered. You have to like plug them in. So for a setup like this, where we leave this setup in the warehouse at all times for programming, filming content, etc., it just makes things a lot easier for us. But we're also using four of the Bowflight Lighting USA tubes. We got the 360 tubes in white on top of the stands. These are the Rockfield collapsible totems. Then we got our normal uh, Global Trust totems. We have the Aurora 1915 wash movers that can do beam and wash together. Those are the spot movers. And we have the brand new Pix FX bars, which uh, we need to get a video out for that. I was going to film a video on that. In fact, I actually did film a video on that, but I used this new camera, which the mic on it was very, 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 very sensitive and just blew out the audio. So the whole video was had to be scrapped. I haven't got around to refilming that. Coming soon though. But yeah, we got a haze generator just to throw some haze up in the air. But that is the setup that we have today to basically show some of the sound switch programming we have in place and give you guys some demos. This program that we have also supports a lot of other fixtures. Oh, I forgot we have uplights. We have S4 uplights on this. So this is all we're demoing today. Uh, Marcellus, what other fixtures do we already have built into this? The other fixtures that we have built into this is our mini beam movers, our code sparks, and our IR force. So obviously that's not here in the demo, but if you do own those lights, uh, you can easily just set the DMX channel and get them working. Yeah, we have them tucked around back here. These are little mini beam movers. Another fixture that needs to have its own dedicated video 
And then I think one of the most common questions we always get about our sound switch project, as he referred to, is what if you don't have MH150 spots? You have Chave Intimidator movers, or you have like ADJ Element Pars. This program works with those, right? Yes, so in the project, uh, we built it out to make it pretty simple for you to add in your existing fixtures. And we also created videos on our YouTube, both Lighting USA, uh, that roughly shows you how to do that and within five minutes or less. What you're looking at and what we're gonna go through here, this pre-programmed file is well in the excess of 40 hours of programming um, that's done up to basically make all the fixtures look amazing. So I think we need to go ahead and show some of the fixtures in action and uh, we'll go through some of the different scenes and everything that exist on the profile. So for you guys wondering, by default, when you get your sound switch, pretty much none of these fixtures are going to work. They have some built in, but the bigger thing is there's what's known as auto loops in sound switch. So these are pre-programmed like color combinations and effects and movements that make the fixtures do what they're supposed to do. And by default, the sound switch project comes with little to no creativity. It's very bland, very basic, and honestly, it looks like crap. So what Marcellus did was spend plenty of hours reprogramming all of these fixtures to work. And the biggest effort was getting these tubes pixel mapped. So basically we have four different banks here of color combinations and it's pretty much broken into, you got your two color combos over here on the left bank, three color combos, complex and your fades. And you saw this on my last video, but basically that allows me when I'm at my event to, you know, start with some intro open music here on some two color combos. Maybe I'm up in the BPM a little bit into the 100s. I'm in bank two, drop it to a slow song with some fades or I'm in complex. So it'll bounce onto the BPM to your Serato, to your virtual DJ, record box. As long as you have the link fix you're set up so that it's going to link between them, you're good to go. And then also the bigger thing that I think takes the most amount of time is your static scenes because these these are 100% not programmed. So basically static scenes are what you see right here. It's a static look that you would typically use for like opening the doors or during dinner. Maybe you need to switch it up a little bit during dinner and you have a couple different options to work with. First dance uh, and also firing your cold sparks. So inside of here are all the different ones. So by default we have a ice white, we have a red, we have a blue, a green, yellow, pink, purple, and a white with cold sparks. So basically that allows you to hit this and fire the cold sparks as well. There's also some different static scenes for your tubes. And we also have on the left or the right here, we have cold spark control. So turning your cold sparks on and off and also doing the cold spark clean out function, which is super important. And new feature, we're gonna get to all the new features. We have a perfect strobe button as well because the strobe sequencing on all of these different fixtures is different. So like a 200 level strobe on the up lights looks awesome, but on the tubes, it looks terrible. So we basically programmed a pre perfect strobe. So yeah, we'll show you guys some of the actual banks playing to some music here in a second, but basically these are your override controls that you also have where you can do solid white. You can also hit your blackout to turn it off. You can hit your strobe, which again, looks different depending on what fixture you can kind of tell there. The movers are doing a very slow strobe versus the tubes are doing a better strobe and the up lights are strobing about once every three seconds. And you can adjust that right here as well. So that's kind of the, the setup. You also have dimmer control here too and different fixtures are linked to different groups here. One, two, three, and four. So you can individualize control how bright the movers are, how bright the tubes are, and how bright the up lights are. But that's a breakdown of what you see on the interface side and this is what all has been programmed in this file. Again, once you download the file. Basically, if you purchase the file from our website, you upload it to your computer. And if you have these fixtures, you're off to the races. If you have different fixtures, it takes five to 10 minutes to basically change the fixture programming a little bit. You don't actually have to do any programming. You just got to do some mapping to different things. And we have videos that explain how to do that. Let's show you guys some of the features. So right now we're on bank three. This is the most complex movements and craziness that exists in the program file which I think is what everybody wants to see. So that's Marcellus hitting the manual strobe button right there where he can strobe over override. So these are the three color combos. I was going to go through them. Here are the two color combos. Really cool with the picks or the, the tubes doing the bounce. And lastly, these are some of the fades.
that right there is a quick little run through demo of what the newest version of the show looks like. And I actually didn't even notice some of the additional features that Marcellus has programmed in on the auto loops that allow you to do individualized controls of like white pulses and stuff. But I want to talk uh, a little bit quickly on the community that was developed off of SoundSwitch to do improvements or just talk about improvements in general. Cause one of the biggest things when we first launched this was we quickly realized that not everybody uses the exact same setup that we use. Mm -hmm. And Marcellus has done a lot of work to improve, tweak and add in additional features and layers through our community. So we have this support group community where basically you can join in for a little bit of money per month and basically any feedback tweaks that need to be done, he's been implementing to make better for the community. You've reprogrammed the whole thing since we started, didn't you? Like you wiped it and restarted, yeah, yeah, yeah. took it down to the ground and rebuilt it up to make it better fit for functionality on everyone's part. So talk about the community at least. So we currently got over 100 plus users uh, using this profile. Uh, they are super excited about it. Talks about how easy it made them get into DMX and just the transition of actually having computer control for their uh, DJ lighting. Now, what Ricky was talking about with the Service Plus, uh, we go above and beyond. We wanna make sure that you are enjoying your product. So like he was saying, do take your feedback and add it into this project. But on top of that, we do offer a meeting. So if you need some help with the Sound Switch profile, we wanna go inside with you more to help you build it out to your setup. So the biggest thing I wanna talk about with this Sound Switch, because you know we're not showing any actual specific programming of Sound Switch, and that's because I literally don't have a clue how to do Sound Switch programming. That's what he's for. He literally does it and I'm, what I'm basically have created is a way for you guys to gain access to him as a programmer to make sound switch work for you guys as well. Like I said from the beginning, the fact that sound switch integrates directly with your DJ laptop, so that way you only need one computer to do all of your events when it comes to DMXing and when it comes to your music. And the fact that sound switch can link to your DJ program, see what BPM you're playing at and all that, and then match the lighting to said BPM through the awesome leak feature just makes it simple. And then all you have to worry about is just setting your tempo. Are you on a two color combo tempo? Or are you on a three color? Did you drop down to slow songs? You need to do some fades. Are you doing high energy and you want to do the complex scenes? You want to go a step further and just, you want to do white strobes, just hit it real quick. You want to hit a blackout cause you're on a, a break real quick. You can do all that in the program. And you have the awesome static scenes as well that allow for basically the full functionality of the program. But I want to show you guys real quick. One of the things I missed completely that he integrated. And in general, before you showing you this, just the improvements that have been made to the program are insane. I mean, for one, we didn't have tubes when we launched this. We didn't have the pix bars when we launched it. We didn't have the mini beam movers when we launched it. And now all these fixtures are completely programmed into the profile, including all the cold sparks to virtually make it good for any type of lighting, whether it's tube style lighting, pix bar style lighting, moving heads, par fixtures. That's kind of how we break it down. You have like par fixtures, moving fixtures, and then you have your complex tubes and pix bars and cold sparks. Those require way more programming and integration. This is kind of what I, I didn't even notice this, but he was doing it while he was playing music. There's these hot buttons in the center here. New hot shots. Hot shots is what he calls them, hot shots. So he can make, we have four individualized tubes program and he can make each one of them turn white and same thing with the pix bars he's got some different controls for the pix bars as well so no they're actually overrides to do more hot shots so uh the one hot shot i'm gonna click here is like the blinders only it gives a nice little like crowd rowdy effect um if okay you ever need to hype up so the that's crowd. the the effects bars blinders only or the strobes only yeah. and then we have a uh, blinder strobe. So that's just the strobes going. Got it. Then we got the warm white. So those are the blinders. And then we have a little rainbow going on here. So you can jump to that rainbow scene whenever. So these are literally just quick hit buttons. So he's just hitting it and then it goes to that. And then when you release, it turns off. So it's just a little quick. If you want to hit a strobe for the just the pix bars, you can do that. If you want to hit just the blinders, you can hit just the blinders. Same with the tubes. So the, what he was mentioning. Yeah, the, the tubes one through four. So you can literally just hit it and then voila, the you can basically just sit there and play and make the tubes bounce to the white. A little cool feature. I guess someone asked for that or did you create that? Just kind of created it. Wanted to make it more intuitive. So if you are in like a slow time of DJing, you can have some fun with it. Yeah, you can have a little fun. I like it. And then I guess the last one, just a perfect strobe. I guess it's good to just get a video of the difference, but this is the perfect strobe. So that's the perfect strobe. And again, we're gonna have to deal with shutter rates, but if you can tell everything is strobing uniformly versus if we just hit white and strobe, that's what it looks like. Like I pointed out earlier, the tubes are strobing great, 
The movers not so much and the pars not at all. Pix bars are like every three seconds. The tubes look good, but that's why we went ahead and created an auto loop called the perfect strobe so that everything strobes perfectly. Now, I think we also need to point out because a lot of people ask about how many fixture individualized are programmed and how that really works. So when you have never done wireless DMX, if you've never done DMX before, I highly recommend you go watch some of my tutorials on just the basics of DMX, like how it works. But basically you have a software interface. It can be computer controlled or manual control via the big slider decks, the old school one. That goes either wired to the fixture or via wireless. Most people are using wireless nowadays that goes to the fixtures. And then each fixture will have its own address, zero to 512 per universe. We're only using one universe here, two universes. You guys are in a whole nother league. Props to you guys for doing crazy DMX programming like that. But this is one universe, so each fixture will have its own three digit number, either one, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And we get away with only using one universe because we don't program every individual fixture when it comes to say having 20 uplights around a room, we don't program each individualized uplight. Instead, we program two uplight groups. So basically we have 243 and 253. Those are the two channels that we use all the time. And the same thing, if you guys got the same program, basically you alternate 243 and 253 around the room. Room, and that adds enough variety so that they can do some bounces back and forth. They can all do the same thing, different pulses, etc. But then you're only using 20 DMX channels for 20, 40, 50 uplights versus 10 channels per light. Again, there's only 512 channels per universe. So that's what I know. I know we only have two profiles for the two pars. What else do we have? I know we did some more for the tubes. So for the, for the tubes, uh, we have four individual profiles. So we can do a lot of chases with the tube. So that's how you was able to see me jump between one, two, three, and four uh, when it comes to the tubes. For the movers, you do have those in two separate groups as well. Uh, but the recent discovery, which was kind of a BFO, a blind and flash of the obvious for me, was that with our programming, if you are running four movers, you can put the pan tilt on your outside movers and kind of have like a dual group layering system. Each movers is kind of uh, cycling between each other and doing a lot more chase patterns. So you have times where your spots are just on and times where your washes are just on. Or you can have it how we kind of got it set up here in this demo, where this side will pretty much be the same as that side. So both of these movers will work the same and both of these movers will work the same. And then we got two effects channels, two we different ones. One channel for the FX picks bar. Just one way of one individual group for the effects bar. So all the effects ones will do the same as of now. Yep. So that's kind of how it's uh, broken down. And then of course we have the cold sparks and there's just one, one cold spark program as well for that. One of the things you might've caught there is that all four of our movers are only operating on two different types of groups. One thing that's understated about sound switch that I don't think a lot of people understand is that you program the fixture type, you don't program the individual fixture. So all of the programming that we've done, why we say you can use it with any different mover, any different par, is because sound switch allows you to program the fixture type. In sound switch, you program the fixture type, or as Marcella says, the group. But basically you program the movers, you program all movers. So basically sound switch allows you to program once for all types of movers, then you can program once for all types of pars, etc. So that allows you to, in the software, just switch in and out different pars as new pars become available, or if you upgrade, etc. you can swap out your pars and never have to change the programming. That is an understated factor about sound switch that a lot of people overlook. I remember back in Show Express, if I got a new par light, I had to completely reprogram every single button on sound switch. If I got a new mover, I had to completely re-switch every single thing. Literally when I first got a uh, sound switch, I had had the new wash effects movers and stuff for probably three, four months. And the only reason I hadn't started using them is because I didn't want to program them into Show Express. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'm going to sound switch because I don't want to spend another 15 hours programming two new movers into my whole entire program. That is awesome. And like Marcella said, because there's only two mover groups, yeah. so there's two different sets of like things they can be doing. One of the treat cheat codes you can have with four movers is you can flip the pan and tilt on the outside ones and then they're doing an opposite look. I used to do that in Show Express. I only 
programmed one mover. It was like one channel and then the other one was just inverted. That's just a little trick you can do. And you can adjust the pan and tilt right on the actual fixtures itself. It's pretty easy to do. So we're gonna show an example where right now we just flip the pan and tilt on the outside movers. Um, another thing you can do is just have opposite profiles. So this could be profile one, profile two, profile two, profile one. But right now we got it one and two and one and two as well. And now basically exact same, they're doing the exact same thing, just flipped pan and tilt. Your other option, of course, if you have two different channels, you could do one, two, one, two. And then if you do those looks, you can flip the pan and tilt on this side and then they're alternates of each other. So that's actually how we have it set up right now. Both this one and this one are on the exact same group. All we did was flip the pan and tilt on one of them and now they are mirroring each other. Same thing on the outside. These are both on channel two. We just flipped the pan and tilt and now they're mirroring each other. So you can play around with the pan and tilt functionality to make different looks because you can also do the same thing if this was one and two and one and two, you can flip the pan and tilt on one of the, on the outside ones, you can flip the pan and tilt on the inside ones and you can really get creative with your different setups. That's just a little additional pointer on things you can do to be creative with this setup is just by utilizing the inverting of the pan and tilt on the dedicated fixtures to make two individual DMX programs do more things. So once again, we essentially have taken the DMX world and made it simple. That's our main thing here at Both Lighting USA. We're trying to make lighting easy for DJs. Not just simple, throw some pars out lighting, but making complex DMX shows like this easy. And I can't reiterate enough how simple, this has made DMXing just for me easy. I am a person, as you guys know on the channel, I've talked about it. I have started from ground zero on DMXing with zero knowledge and figured out how to completely control all the different fixtures. And when I tell you, literally this man makes an update, sends me the file, I upload it, and voila, my movers now do all these different creative things. That's another thing to talk about. Since the original release, he's gone back through and added in a lot of prisms and gobos and effects that really look amazing in haze. And just overall, polished the program to a very fine degree now where everything is just in sync, everything works beautiful, and I, the tubes are the coolest thing. They're all pixel mapped and ready to go. So if you guys are also interested in making lighting very simple for you guys, complex DMX lighting, you guys can go to the website. It'll be linked down below. It's a full one through five steps. I'm gonna quickly outline it for you guys, but everything is laid out on the website as well as the video tutorials that talk about how you in actually download the program, how you set it up on the computer. So you can actually walk through all the tutorials of how you set it up. Me and Marcellus went through it together and show you how to set it up on your computer, how you load up Serato correctly with your controller and your control one, all that's already on there. So you can look through that before you make your purchase as well. But what you need to do is one, you need to have a computer. Two, you need to purchase a sound switch license. So it's like $10 a month. It's not that expensive. It's a subscription fee or you can buy, there's an unlimited pass as well. Yep, so if you, wanna, right. if you wanna start on the $10 model and see if you like it, or you can just buy it outright. I think it's like 200 bucks, right? Which is a steal, honestly. I bought mine completely. Marcellus has his completely. All of our guys, we just bought them complete $200. Like they're all set for life on sound switch. So you can buy that. You also need to get yourself a sound switch interface. Again, you can get a control one, which we love. I think they're like $300 right now. So it is a little bit of an expense. You need to get one of these or you can get a micro. Like I said, you can get one of these micros right here. Um, these are like 30 bucks, I think, right? 30 bucks, they're a lot cheaper. They're normally not broken like this one is. Uh, the outer shell broke on us. And then you need to get basically your lighting and a DMX transmitter slash receiver setup to get DMX to all of your fixtures that don't have receivers built in. All the up lights we sell already have the receiver built into them. The effects picks bars, they have the receiver built into them. The tubes have the receiver built into them. Mostly movers and cold sparks are the only things you need to buy receivers for and you can either buy donor or the pros. But yeah, you need to get your DMX signal to your fixtures in some way, shape or form. This comes into our part where we have the pre-programmed sound switch file that this man right here programmed. So if you go to the website, uh, there's different options. If you don't have the tubes yet, or you don't need the complex craziness, you just need movers and up lights for now, you can get that package. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, you can buy that pre-programmed file, or you can buy the Mac Daddy that has them all. And down the line, if you do have the initial one, you can pay the little bit of an upgrade price to get the better one. 
and then we also have the support plus so for a small fee of 15 dollars a month you basically get unlimited access to this guy to basically help solve your problems help you set it up make sure it is all up and running and if there's any updates any new fixtures that may or may or may not come out in the future um this is interesting those updates will be included with your uh your sound switch support plus subscription fee so for the original guys that jumped on that when we released the tubes they got that tube upgrade at no additional cost it's a really cool support feature these are coming soon hope you guys enjoyed this video marcellus am i missing anything no i think we're pretty good just make sure you guys hit us up if you got any questions yeah seriously if you guys got any questions if you guys didn't know on the both lighting usa site if you go to the support thing we have a phone number you guys can dial in talk to us answer all your questions we're here to support you guys we're here to make lighting easy for you guys shoot us a dm shoot me a comment down below if we didn't answer any features let us know we'll make some specific videos on both lighting usa's youtube page i'm going to link that down below as well you guys should all go subscribe to our both lighting usa page so that way you guys can get all the updated videos on the fixtures we have a lot of troubleshooting guides on there all sorts of stuff like that so anyways that's all for this video new videos to come with new features new products awesome stuff like that uh, the mini B movers, more on the FX bars. Let me know what videos you guys want to see filmed on the channel. We'll link everything down below. So, anyways, keep the record spinning. Peace. Peace.